Thanks, Dick. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome everyone um, to the opening day of the War Ethics Conference. I am Don Rutherford. I'm chair of the UC San Diego uh, Philosophy Department. And on behalf of the department and the university, I want to welcome everyone warmly to sunny La Jolla, as you've seen here, and for the start of which I assume will be an excellent, stimulating conference. Um, I know many of you have traveled far. We're very grateful for your coming. Uh, this conference is, was conceived and organized by my colleague Sam Rickless, who in a moment will uh, introduce it to you. I just wanted to say a little bit about the larger context of the event of the department. Sam has very graciously allowed the department to represent it as part of our series that we've begun this year called Ethics in the Public Sphere. I don't think I need to um, defend to this audience the importance for philosophers to be engaged on ethical issues of societal significance. And I know, you know many of you have sort of given a large part of your careers to doing this. It's something that um, I think is becoming felt more and more as an imperative for, law, for philosophers to be engaged on major issues of the day. And it's something the department has uh, begun an initiative on. We planned three events for this year. In the fall, we had a day-long symposium on our duties to the distant needy. Uh, we have this two-day conference on war ethics. And then in the spring quarter, we have a day-long symposium organized by Michael Taboras from our department on the aims of education, which will bring together philosophers and educational theorists and practitioners to discuss that topic, the aims of education. So f many of you may not be here, I or may not be from the area. Some of you are from San Diego, though, so if you are, I encourage you to put the date April 20th in your calendar, and hopefully you can join us on that day also. That's what I have to say. Thank you very much for coming, and I look forward to a great conference. Sam Rickles. Well, it's a pleasure to see you all here after all the planning that went into the conference. I just want to say um, a few words about how it came to be. Some years ago, I won't say long, how long ago, because if I tell you, then you'll know that I'm 48 years old and will have none of that. My father prevailed on me to join him to visit one of his favorite people in the world, one of his closest friends. As most of you surely must acknowledge, and as I am discovering in the case of my own daughters, children are always more hip and cool and knowledgeable than their parents. At the time we paid Peter a visit, I had been struggling to convince my father that there was good reason for him to continue supporting my decision to pursue a PhD in philosophy. My father try, <clears throat> was a gifted attorney who specialized in contracts, entertainment law, and tax law. I had tried for a few years, ever since I had discovered the joys of philosophy, to convince him that the method of counterexample and the method of extracting general principles from particular cases are close cousins to the method of law school hypotheticals and the method of common law adjudication. But dad wasn't buying it. His response to trolley cases and evil demons and things like that was to say that he never really liked hypos in law school either. Anyway, there we were in Peter Lewis's apartment talking about this and that, and the conversation must have turned to my future. I explained that I was interested in pursuing philosophy and that I wasn't sure whether to study political philosophy or philosophy of language or something else. And Dad's behavior may have revealed a certain impatience or discomfort because Peter turned to him and said, I'm probably getting this wrong. Uh, Elwood, is there some problem with the study of political philosophy? I forget what Dad said in reply, but I do remember what I do remember is Peter, not himself a professional philosopher, spending the next 15 or so minutes patiently, really lovingly, explaining to Elwood the basic thesis defended in the early chapters of Rawls' theory of justice. Justice as fairness, the original position, the two principles, and so on. Peter gestured at a bookshelf behind him, crammed full of all my favorite philosophy classics. My father, who up until that moment in his life had been alternately amused and puzzled, at my decision to pursue philosophy was transfixed, transfixed, and so was I. Here was someone whose feet were firmly planted in the real world, sharing with us the joys of the life of the mind. After that visit, my father was more accepting of abstract principles and hypothetical cases, 
And I grew less hostile, as Jerry Cohen might say, less hostile to facts. Fast forward to last year, Peter and I had been exchanging emails about his further thoughts about justice, rights, and utility in times of peace, but also in times of war. And so I pitched the idea for a conference on war ethics and asked Peter whether he would be able to help out, help make the conference a reality. And he said yes, and so we are all here. I hope he doesn't mind my taking this opportunity to thank him for his generosity. So just one brief word about the mechanics of the Q&A after the talks. Uh, you'll have a 45-minute talk followed by 15 minutes of comment and then uh, 30 minutes of question and answer. Um, I think if it, would be, if it would be all right with you, the speaker can, can uh, handle questions from the podium and will be uh, handling the questions. And then the uh, clip-on mic will go to the commentator who will be available also. And then uh, there will be a handheld microphone which um, one of us in the room will be passing around to those of you who are chosen to ask questions. Okay, thanks very much. Without further ado.